My name is Ara Tapuzian. I'm with Troy Chamber of Commerce. I have also the privilege of sitting on the board for Creative Many. And it's my pleasure to introduce Mike Finney today from the governor's office. Uh, as a really quick bio on Mike, Mike Finney was recently appointed to serve Michigan Governor Rick Snyder as senior advisor for economic growth after leading the Michigan Economic Development Corporation as its president and CEO from January 1, 2011 through the end of the year of 2014. In his new role, Mike will focus on expanding and or launching key initiatives that drive greater economic prosperity throughout the state of Michigan. Examples including expanding community ventures, assisting urban communities with home mortgage financing and auto insurance affordability. He will also represent Governor Snyder in a variety of business development activities, including international business attraction mission trips. His responsibilities at the MEDC, including serving as Governor Rick Snyder's Economic Growth Group Executive and as President and Chair of the Michigan Strategic Fund. Under Mike's leadership, the MEDC moved to the forefront of U.S. economic development organizations with innovative new initiatives, including Pure Michigan Business Connect community ventures, and the revitalized Michigan export programs. During his tenure, Michigan became the comeback state, adding more than 300,000 new jobs and 13.5 billion of new investment. Everybody needs Mike in their organization. Prior to taking the helm at the MEDC, Mike served as president and CEO of Ann Arbor Spark, a public-private partnership whose mission is to advance innovation-based economic development in the greater Ann Arbor, Michigan region. He's also served president and CEO of Greater Rochester Enterprise in Rochester, New York, vice president of emerging business sectors at the MEDC, senior vice president and general manager Thompson Saginaw, and assistant city manager in Saginaw, Michigan. Mike currently serves on the Board of Directors for the State Science and Technology Institute. He previously served as Chair of the Michigan Strategic Fund Board and on Governor Snyder's Talent Investment Board. His volunteer service has included Washtenaw Community College Foundation and University of Michigan National Advisory Councils, Life Science Institute, Office of Technology Transfer, and Center for Entrepreneurship. He has received numerous awards in recognition, including the 2014 Michigan Venture Capital Association Lifetime Achievement Award, 2008 Saginaw Valley State University Outstanding Alumnus for the College of Business and Management, named by Crane's Detroit Business as one of the 2007 Newsmakers of the Year, and the 2005 Minute uh, Distinguished Professor at Rochester Institute of Technology. Mike holds a Master of Arts in Human Resources from Central Michigan University and a Bachelor's of Business Administration from Saginaw Valley State University. Wow. How do you have time to do anything else? This is beyond me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mike Finney. Now, now that intro might be a little bit longer than my talk. So uh, the next time I think I'll edit it down. You know, it's always a pleasure to have an opportunity to get in front of audiences that are a little bit different for, for my daily activities. Uh, normally, I'm uh, engaged with uh, business leaders uh, from around the country, uh, from around the world. In fact, uh, most recently, I was over in China during the governor's mission trip there. And I have to say, uh, it has become quite the robust opportunity for us. I do see some of my uh, MEDC colleagues in the room also, so I, I want to acknowledge that because uh, Kevin uh, Kerrigan traveled with me. I see Kevin here. I see Doug Smith here, and I'm sure there are others. Uh, so again, uh, it's my pleasure to be here just to share a few thoughts with you. You know, I had an opportunity to meet with another group just a few months ago uh, talking about creative. I think it was the Creative Convergence uh, organization. And so I went to my notes and took a look at what I had there and uh, spruced it up a little bit. Uh, I thought I would give you an update in terms of what the current thinking is and where we are in the state of Michigan with respect to this whole industry. I can tell you from day one, when I joined the MEDC, when Governor Snyder was first elected to office back in 2010, I can tell you uh, my conversations with him always centered around the relative importance of not just 
uh, all the, the, the uh, statutory requirements we had for moving the state forward from a governmental standpoint, but it also included discretionary things that we could do to make our state a desirable location for businesses and for talent. And certainly the creative industry is one of those vital resources that we have that we need to build on in order to ensure that Michigan is in fact a highly desirable place for talent. You know, Aaron pointed out a few of our successes during Governor Snyder's first term of office, and I thought I'd just include that as a, an opening slide. I like to, to remind folks that we've made an awful lot of progress in the first uh, four and a half years or so of the governor's uh, term of office. Uh, Aaron used the term, the comeback state, and so I included that as my opening bullet point, and it's really not us saying it. This is commentary that's coming from across the country. When you talk to individuals who measure and rank states in terms of their economic prosperity, they've identified Michigan as the comeback state. And for a lot of good reasons, our GDP growth is outpacing the nation as a whole. The number of jobs that have been created over the last five years, again, is outpacing the United States as a whole. The un our unemployment rate for the first time since 2001 is at the same level as the United States as a whole. And I remember when Governor Snyder took office, Michigan was number 49 out of 50 states in terms of unemployment. We were second worst, and we now have moved to be equal to the national average. And we've, we're leading the nation in terms of manufacturing jobs, and we often think of manufacturing when we think of the auto industry, and to a great extent, that is still Michigan's bread and butter. But we're a state that makes things, and it's important to recognize that we make furniture here in our state. We're one of the largest, particularly in, in terms of office furniture. We process an awful lot of foods with major companies like Kellogg's and others that are here in our state. We produce medical devices with companies like Stryker and Terumo Cardiovascular and so many others. We produce pharmaceuticals and the list goes on in terms of the manufacturing prowess that we have and leadership that we have in our state. And so that 140,000 jobs that's leading the nation is not just about cars, it's about making an awful lot of other things. And then what's really nice uh, is that the efforts that the team from the MEDC has put in has really positioned our state to be one of the top five states when it comes to new corporate uh, locations and expansions. And every time you pick up the newspaper, regardless of which one you look at, there seems to be a new corporate expansion happening someplace here in the city or in other parts of our state. And it's pretty exciting to have finally gotten ourselves back to a position of prosperity versus the distress that we were in for so long. So how does this thing work? Well, we have a three-pronged approach. We try and keep this as simple as possible in terms of how we approach uh, the business growth and prosperity. We think first and foremost, talent is in fact the, the currency of economic prosperity, business growth, and business investment. And so I like to use the term, in the economic development world, talent is the new currency in economic development. And I believe that. Because if you have the, the kinds of skills that businesses need, they will in fact consider locating in your state, in your region. If you don't have the kind of talent that companies are looking for, it is highly unlikely that you'll be able to attract business. And Michigan has an abundance of talent. We have great universities, great community colleges. We have an excellent school system and we invest in education. Clearly we need to do more. I'm not suggesting we don't. But we, we are producing some of the best and brightest and it's exciting to be a part of that. We also know that you've got to have vibrant businesses and you've got to be, have an environment where businesses want to invest. And so a lot of the hard work that was done in the first year or two of Governor Snyder's term centered around creating a business environment that was friendly, fixing broken rules, fixing our business taxes, and the list goes on in terms of, of things that changed to make, business a, as, to make Michigan a much more business friendly environment. And then lastly, we've got to have vibrant communities. And that's where you all come in. That's where your industry is vitally important. It's creating those kinds of places and spaces and providing the creativity that really does make a difference in our communities. So I'll spend the last uh, few minutes or so really just talking about some of the things that's happening with respect to arts, culture, recreation, tourism, all those things that really touch on what I think you all represent. When it comes to attracting talent, we've got a number of programs uh, that are intended to help, you know, uh, uh, improve the skill set of individuals uh, in our state. Programs like uh, Matt Squared, uh, uh, the uh, Live Work Detroit, 
uh, Jumpstart are just a few of the key programs that we have that's helping to drive the, ta the talent uh, activity in our state. And looking at, uh, at, at communities, we want to ensure that, our, that our, all of our communities are actively engaged in placemaking. And by placemaking, we want to ensure that we have communities that our talented individuals want to live in. And so you've got to have the right mix of not just business, but you've got to have a mix of arts, culture, recreation, and other activities. And we think we're creating that kind of mix. We're focused on eliminating blight in our urban communities where we have significant levels of blight. And I think Detroit is probably the poster child for some of the activities that are underway under the, the mayor's leadership and the rest of his team, and of course with support from the federal government and the state. We're trying to create corridors and nodes and anchors that really represent uh, just vibrant and exciting opportunities for, for, for individuals like the, 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 the class of, of, of talent that you all represent uh, to locate in. We're trying to ensure that we have the right kind of infrastructure developments. I was excited as I drove into Detroit this morning to have to dodge all the construction that's going on with the latest piece of infrastructure, that being the light rail, and some of the other pieces that are associated with that. Alternative modes of transportation, uh, light rail, uh, we've got a whole new regional transit authority that's going in to help make transportation even easier throughout the entire region. And then, of course, we're activating public spaces in ways that we historically haven't. In fact, one of the more exciting programs that the MEDC has underway is it's, uh, it's a crowdfunding program to help improve public spaces throughout the state. And I think we've launched at least a dozen of those in various locations from the Upper Peninsula all the way down to the Ohio border. So some really exciting things that are happening in terms of placemaking to really improve the overall quality of living in our, in our state. These are just some examples. I won't really try and talk through each one of these, but these are just some of the public spaces that we've tried to activate over the past um, uh, a few years or so. And they all have uh, you know, differing opportunities and challenges for them. Uh, and at the, the bottom left there, you can see uh, where we uh, have launched our, our challenge grant program that's really starting to have significant impact throughout the state. In the arts space, the Michigan Council for the Arts and Cultural Affairs is the organization that, that we've primarily funded uh, to really help support most of what you do. I'm really proud to say that when Governor Snyder took office, uh, we were funding the, the cultural space uh, to the tune, tune of about one and a half million dollars a year. Uh, that number has increased over the past four and a half years now. It's approaching about $10 million a year. So again, it's, an, it's a signal of the commitment and the importance of the activities you're involved with is that we're continuing to grow arts and culture. I listened to some of the other speakers talk about cool things that are happening, like um, uh, the, the, the big art program, uh, Art Prize in Grand Rapids that's launching today, as well as many other art and cultural activities that are happening th throughout the state. All very exciting. You know, our tourism program is another one that I find to be just absolutely amazing. You know, I remember coming into the MEDC and we had this campaign called Pure Michigan. And uh, it had incredible potential. And we thought that if we could just double down our investment and find a way to stabilize the flow of, of, of investment in the Pure Michigan campaign, it could really be an absolute home run. And what we've been able to demonstrate over the last five years is that the tourism activity in our state has consistently grown to the tune of a billion dollars or more on an annual basis. The impact of that is pretty incredible. Now, I have to say it's a little bit irritating because my wife and I, we do an annual uh, little vacation around our annual anniversary, August uh, 6th each year, into the, uh, you know, the northwest corner of the state. And this year, we could hardly turn without running into Indiana, Ohio, Texas, New York, Pennsylvania, and the list goes on and on, license plates. It was so irritating that we paid about 50% more than we typically pay for hotel space. And we just attributed that to, to being the out-of-state rates that we were paying. But the reality is, is that the Pure Michigan campaign has really overachieved. And it's really been a phenomenal resource. We liked it so much that we decided to extend it not just for tourism, but to business also. And it's amazing as I travel now and when I get out and I talk about Michigan, and when we use the term Pure Michigan, whether it's business or tourism, the, the connectivity by people that we're talking to is pretty darn amazing. So we like it, and it's really having a positive impact on the state. It literally pays for itself 
based on the new revenues that flow into the state from the, uh, the various taxes that are collected by individuals who are spending here in our state. So it's pretty exciting. Last thing I want to talk about is about Detroit. Because, you know, Detroit is now the end thing. If you haven't figured that out, uh, boy, you haven't been following all that's been happening across the country and across the world. Uh, a couple years ago, when Detroit was at its, its depth and going through the restructuring and bankruptcy, uh, we made a trip to China. And every meeting we had, every media outlet we talked to, the conversation was all about, will Detroit continue to exist uh, following this bankruptcy? Because in the uh, Mandarin language, I think bankruptcy translates to mean ceasing to exist. And so there was this concern by virtually everyone we talked to uh, if Detroit would continue to exist after the bankruptcy. And it wasn't just in China. It was throughout the world. It was around the United States. Everyone wanted to know if Detroit would do well. Fast forward to today, we just came back from one of the most fantastic trips we've ever had in China. And all the talk was about opportunities to invest in, in and around Detroit. So it's clearly made the turn. And it's through a lot of the efforts of individuals like all of you here in this room today, all the, the organizations, philanthropic and otherwise, who have decided to make bets on Detroit, boy, is it paying off with really cool companies. One in this building, Shinola, that we all know about and we probably are all wearing our Shinola watches or have bought leather goods or other things from them. But they're not the only company. It's Detroit Denim Company. And I can go on and on in terms of all the real cool investments that are happening here in Detroit. And if you just look at the construction cranes, it is absolutely amazing. I remember some of the early projects we worked on here in Detroit. We were, in fact, the senior investor in many of the construction projects that were happening. We're now finding that the marketing, market is starting to take hold with private investment coming in and playing the role that it should play. And the need for support from government is becoming less and less. And that's what you want is a true market economy here in Detroit, just like we have every place else in the world. And we're excited to say that the results are starting to happen. At last count, we were connected to more than $10 billion of new investment in Detroit. You know, one of the more interesting investments that uh, recently broke ground and has now completed its foundation is the new arena project that's happening just uh, south of here. But it's not just about an arena. It's about a, a roughly 45 block square area that's being redeveloped to create an incredible entertainment district. And how exciting is that for Detroit? How exciting is that for all of you? Because that district should represent one of the most significant assets that your industry will have to go out and sell all that's happening here in the state of Michigan, here in Michigan, and with your own entities. It's a real cool investment. It's one that, you know, that the entire team at the state of Michigan was totally supportive of. And we couldn't be more pleased that the Illiches and everyone else associated with it saw fit to move forward with that project because it has direct implications for all that you're involved with and we're pretty excited about it. So that's our story. That's my story. And uh, like I say, I uh, could not be more enthusiastic about all that you represent. Uh, trust me when I say that the governor and the rest of our team are totally supportive of all the great work that you do. Obviously, there's still a lot to be done. I heard some statistics about the, the workforce not growing to the same extent that other industries are in our state. And we've got to figure that out. We've got to ensure that it continues to grow because it is a vital part of our overall economic prosperity and quality of living. Thank you very much.